Hey, it's Elena from Mason Dixon Acres. Welcome back to my garden. It is now August 1st and I have a garden update for you. We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-20s working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. A lot has changed in the garden in the past month. The garden is flourishing, so let's go take a look. So first, we're gonna take a look at our pepper plants. So in the last video, I don't know if there were any peppers on the plants at all, but they were probably a lot smaller than this. And now we have so many peppers. If you look here, this plant alone has about six peppers on it. Now this is a specific variety that I'm waiting for it to ripen. Um, it's called a lipstick pepper, so I have to wait until they are red before I harvest them. In front of them, we have regular peppers that we've already been harvesting, and these are just your standard green and purple peppers. In my first order of the garden, I had snap peas planted along this back side over here. Now, it had gotten just way too hot for the snap peas, and they just died off. So in place, I have put some pole beans, and I'm hoping that these pole beans will start growing across this trellis. I also have um, planted, we also planted some sweet potato plants here today. Um, we've been doing these over the past couple of weeks as they're ready to go outside. Uh, these plants are going to vine and they're gonna get pretty big, so, but we're excited for that. Behind me, you can see that the tomato plants have gotten huge and they are grabbing onto this trellis and I'm having to do minimal tying to the trellis because of the setup that I have. They're able to just vine in here, their branches, and hold on to the trellis. You'll also notice that, as I mentioned in my last video, I cut back all of the foliage that is within almost a foot of the ground. So now on this one, I could probably cut off this branch here, but it's not looking too bad, so I'm just gonna leave it there because the plant looks healthy. You can also see that the carrots, I only have a few carrots in this row, but they seem to be doing really well as well. Now these will be ready to harvest once I can see the top of the carrot here. That's not something that I can see, so I'm gonna wait a bit. And if we look over here, these peppers are smaller than the other peppers. These were planted probably a full month later than the others. And the idea being is that I will get a later harvest out of these ones. Also notice that the marigolds have taken over. These were much smaller in the last video. And I'm getting to a point where I'm debating whether or not I should cut them back a little bit or if I should transplant them. So I need to make that decision soon because I wanna make sure I have enough room for my peppers. In the last video, I had some lettuce that was still planted. Once it gets really hot outside, the lettuce bolts and you it's not edible. So we went ahead and pulled that out and I actually planted some beet seeds here. Now, I'm not sure that they'll actually sprout, but I figured I would give it a shot. Um, you can also see that we have our potato plants. Now these potato plants didn't do nearly as good as the potato plants in the other bed. Uh, they still have a lot of growth time, probably several more weeks, if not maybe a month and a half. Uh, we wait until the plants die back completely before harvesting, so uh, we'll probably wait for those. Here's an eggplant plant, and I have some pretty big eggplants here that I can harvest soon. Let's look at this kale plant. Now this kale plant, most of the kale is getting attacked by cabbage loopers. So here are some cabbage loopers that are eating away at the kale plant. This is normal. They come when it's really hot in the summer. This, at this point, this plant is just gonna be chicken food for us. But if we look over here, you see this black bug, that's called the, an assassin bug. That bug will actually eat these cabbage loopers. So we don't, you don't wanna touch the assassin bug because they'll bite you, but it will help us out. In this bed, this is where I have my squash plants and I also have some tomato plants. Now there's two things I wanna point out. My tomato plants are not doing nearly as well as the other tomato plants and you saw in the other bed. I noticed this last year when I planted with squash as well. So now I know for the future, do not plant your tomato plants with your squash because you're not gonna get nearly as good of a yield as if you were to plant them elsewhere. So I'm dealing with a lot of pests with my squash. 
I have seen squash bugs and vine borers, but the vine borers have really taken over. So a lot of today, I spent several hours uh, performing what we would say surgery on our squash. So I've actually been cutting open the vine of the squash. I've been pulling out the vine borer, squishing the vine borer, and then I've been burying the vine. So the idea with that is if I bury the vine, maybe there will be roots that can be formed right on that portion of the vine. Luckily, some of these plants have vined out enough that they've set roots elsewhere, and I'm hoping that that helps keep the fruits healthy that already exist. But vine borers are a serious pest, so if you have them in your squash, you wanna make sure that you burn your plants for next year, and you also wanna make sure that you till the ground or prepare the soil next year so that you don't have new moths that come out and affect your plants. In this bed here, we also have more squash. Now these squash are doing a lot better and haven't been affected by the vine borers as much. They are all butternut squash varieties. Uh, butternut squashes tend to be somewhat resistant to vine borers. I have noticed squash bug damage on these ones, um, but other than that, these plants seem to be super healthy and we have them climbing everywhere. They've escaped the garden and they are climbing along the side, but that's totally okay. Um, the only thing is, is that it's a little hard to tend to them now that they've taken over. Another thing about squash plants is that if you're working with squash plants, you might notice that you have a reaction on your skin. This is because of the tiny little hairs on the squash plants. Um, so if you're reaching in around there, you might notice that you have a bunch of scratches on your arm afterwards and it's kind of like, looks like a rash. That's normal. Um, it, I would just advise that you would wear a long sleeve shirt or something like that. Uh, I know that I personally get that uh, reaction. So that's just something to keep in mind with squash. Here are my watermelon plants. In the original video, I had just planted these plants. Now, whenever I planted the plants outside, I didn't properly harden them off. If you watch one of my previous videos, I, I talk about the negative effects of not properly hardening your plants before taking them outside. In this case, it really, really slowed the growth of the plants, almost so much so that we didn't know if they were gonna produce at all. You can see this is one of the watermelon plants and it looks like a weed at this point. I feel like I could just pull it out of the ground. Um, so these had got a late start. I planted them late. So I'm not exactly sure if they'll produce this year, but I've heard that people will have watermelons growing up until October. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and keep feeding them and keep watering them. In the last video, I had showed you my potato bed and it looked like it was flourishing and super, super healthy. Now everything looks dead. This is absolutely normal. And this is the process that you do for potatoes. You let the plants die back before you harvest. So I have probably maybe another week before I'm gonna harvest these. Um, some people will even wait until two weeks after everything dies back. So I'm just gonna gauge it, you know, maybe dig up a certain area of the potatoes um, and see if I'll be ready to harvest, but they'll be soon. Since my last tour, I added a couple of plants that I didn't have before. I added some corn here. This is sweet corn. It was pretty late to plant it, but I figured I would try my best. And then I also added this trellis with the cucumber plants at the bottom. Uh, I added a second layer of mulch not too long ago. And whenever I added the mulch, the mulch man, is, that's what he calls himself, the guy who delivers our mulch, literally brought me cucumber plants because he knew that I gardened. So I figured this would be a great home for them. We reused this trellis from one of our previous projects. You might've seen that video as well, but um, we're excited and hoping to get some cucumbers this year. Thank you so much for joining me for my garden tour. By this time next month, we will have harvested a lot of different vegetables and probably have canned some tomatoes. So stay tuned for our next update with the garden and make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel for more.